I used to look in the mirror and I didn't know who I was. I would look in the mirror and just, who is this person? And now I look in the mirror and I'm like, I know who this person is. I did know in middle school that I liked boys and I did know that I probably would grow up and, you know, be queer. And also because my, my oldest brother is, he's gay. And he came out when he was 16 and I was around nine. My mom had a, a really hard time with that. She made me promise one time that I wouldn't grow up to be like my brother. It was just pain, this sharp pain, like I'm lying to her because I know that I am going to be like him. I had to watch the way I sat. I just had to be mindful of every little thing that I did. Even in high school, you know, what I was wearing was just things to, to fit in and not be called out for you know, you're different, you're gay. I definitely joined the, the football team as a way to be accepted by the other kids and by the other little boys so they wouldn't make fun of me, that I could be rough and tough too. I didn't know who my father was and I would spend summers with him and you know, he'd always be like, you should, you, you need a man in your life. He was very hyper-masculine and very, very strict. And my mom was very loving and told me she loved me every single day. Of course, there were family members telling her that, like, you know, Jamie, it's, you know, a little, he's effeminate or he has sugar in his tank, which is a very Southern uh, term for um, that you're ruined, that you're ruined. If you have sugar in your tank, you're ruined. You can't reproduce, you know, mm -hmm. but she never withdrew her love. I used to have a mohawk and I cut that mohawk off because someone told me maybe you would have a boyfriend if you didn't have that hairstyle. So I cut my mohawk off thinking these guys would find me attractive and they would not deem me effeminate. And somehow in that moment, I started wearing makeup. I started wearing mascara. I started dressing a little bit more effeminate. You know, I was even more like being on the apps, you know, um, are you mask or are you femme? I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle I'm, or I'm femme. And, you know, immediately like, no, I don't want, if I wanted to date a woman, I would be with a woman. And, of course, stuff like that hurts, you know? And there have been many moments where I've thought, I've entertained the idea of transitioning. I don't necessarily want to be a woman. I think there's just certain attributes that I really like. Before I had the facial hair, I would shave every single day. And I even entertained the idea of getting facial feminization surgery because I wanted less masculine features. That was a time where I, you know, I would be in a space and someone would call me ma'am. Mm -hmm. or miss. I got that a lot before the facial hair, you know? The men's restroom was always a very uncomfortable place to be. I would be in the mirror washing my hands and someone would come in and they would be like, immediately like they were in the wrong restroom. So there was a, a definitely a moment where I felt like maybe, maybe I should switch, you know, maybe I should change. Never felt like gay men really seen me. This feminine energy that I was expressing that I was owning they never really particularly t took an interest to, but straight men always gravitated towards me. And I developed like several connected friendships and relationships with straight guys to a point where they would often tell me, I like you, I love you, but you're not a woman. And that, all of that is, it's, it's very confusing. Embracing this, this masculine part of myself it allowed me to see that femininity wasn't so much outwardly that it comes from within. I still could be femme and have this facial hair. I, you know, I still could have hair and still be femme, but I was so worried about losing that essence before. Now when I see myself with the facial hair and I put on mascara or glitter on my eyes or put on a lip, it's like, wow, it's like, this is really sexy. Navigating life it always felt like a risk. Just existing as a gender non-conforming person is. I feel like I can be attacked in any moment just for who I am and how I'm choosing to express myself. There was an experience I had in New York actually where I was with my, I was with my friends and we were leaving Chinatown. This guy spit on me and called me a Bati boy. Bati boy is Jamaican for faggot. And it was one of the most dehumanizing experiences. More than being called a faggot. But for someone to spit on me when I, when I was, you know, minding my own business and just, just, I was having a moment of just pure joy with my friends. We were, we had just finished laughing. We were just walking and ah, it was my first time in New York, 2014. And to have that happen was just like, wow. Like even New York is not safe. I won't dim my light. I won't dim my light. I will never dim my light. I went back to Oklahoma for my grandmother's 80th birthday. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I hadn't been back in years. And I was like, I'm gonna wear a mesh bodysuit with this fierce jumpsuit, gold eye glitter, and a full face bead. My great aunt, she, she asked if me and my boyfriend were girls or boys. And another family member, just to be funny, told her, oh, they're lesbians, just to shock her even more. And it was definitely a political thing for me by showing up like that um, mm -hmm. to show them, this is who I am, this is who I am, you know? When I was 12, I was feeling so lost, confused about who I, who I was or who I was going to be. And now I look in the mirror and I see myself and I know I have more of a sense of self and who I am and where I'm going and what I want to do and where I want to be. This moment for me feels like a moment to accept that I, that I am special and that I am deserving and I do deserve this. No matter how hard life can get, you have to keep going and never forget who you are. Getting dressed is painting yourself like a portrait, using the clothes as if they're the paint and you're the canvas. What color are you gonna paint yourself today? What portrait do you wanna be? What piece of art do you want to be? We are Lisa and Lily, the creators of Style Like You. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Getting Dressed, an Act of Self-Love, created with Schmitz in honor of pride. Certified vegan and cruelty-free, Schmitz deodorant raises the bar for natural products by using innovative botanicals and mineral-derived ingredients. Like getting dressed, knowing what goes on to your body should be an act of self-love. If you agree that facades separate us and being radically honest brings us together, help spread the movement for self-acceptance by subscribing to our YouTube channel and joining us on Patreon so that we can continue to do our part to build a world where everyone feels comfortable and safe in their skin. And don't forget to click the bell so you know when we have- when. Oh, sorry, I sorry, I left. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to click the bell so you will know when we've released a new video. We would also love it if you would take a moment to comment and tell us what you wear that makes you feel the most free.